Greetings in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you back I, to another Bible study along with me. I do appreciate you all being here. Do me a favor, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. And please consider sharing with others, your loved ones, whoever you feel as though um, that need Christ Jesus. Because at the end of the day, we all need Jesus Christ in our lives. All right, my subject for the day will be, it's time for you to surrender to God. It's time for you to surrender to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We'll be coming from the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 20. Now, this message is not just for unbelievers or just for believers, it's for both. Because if you're an unbeliever, of course, you should understand and realize that you need to surrender your life to God because he wants to be your savior. He wants to save you from his wrath and his wrath has to come because of sin and sin is rebellion against God and we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity so we must be born again and the only way that we could be born again is through believing trusting in Jesus Christ and repenting of our sins and turning from our wicked ways now surrendering to God means you're you're ready to give up everything that you've been doing and I realize that we all have issues in our life and 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 I've had plenty. <laughs> and it got to a point where everything else I tried besides Jesus did not work. You know, you no know, women didn't work, drinking didn't work, lying didn't work, stealing didn't work, you know, having sex did not work. Everything I tried would not work until I surrendered completely to Jesus Christ and he completely changed and transformed my life and he wants to change and transform your life as well and he wants to deliver you from whatever issue you might be having it could be alcohol it could be drugs it could be a multitude of things but he can deliver you if you surrender to him the book of Revelations, chapter three, verse 20 reads, Jesus said that he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart, whoever's out there, if you're somebody that don't know Christ, or you could be someone that was a believer at one time, but you turned back to sin. I'm talking to you. He is now knocking at the door of your heart. The door we know is an entrance, a passageway, an opening. See, if he can get in your heart, then he will change your heart because the thing that proceeded out of the heart, Jesus said, is murders. Okay? Wickedness. The heart is very, very wicked. So he needs to get in our hearts so that he could change us. So he is right now knocking on the door of your heart saying, if you would just let me in. And if you let me into your heart, I want a fellowship with you. I want to deliver you. I want to save you. I want to love you. I want you to know that you are loved, that you are adored, that I was willing to sacrifice my life for you. That's how much I love you. And I'm knocking on the door of your heart because I don't want you to have to face my wrath. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart right now. Will you please Open up the door of your heart and let him in. 
Let him in to change your life. Let him in to transform you because he will do it and he wants to do it. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, you're probably wondering, what does that word commendeth mean? It means to show, to prove, to, to, to exhibit. So he proved his love towards us by dying on the cross while we were yet still in our sins. Did he have to die for us? No, he didn't have to, but he showed and proved his love towards us that while we were yet in our mess, he died for us. That was the whole purpose of him coming was to die for sinners, to save us from his wrath that is to come, to rescue us from the enemy, which is Satan and his demons. To also deliver us from the penalty, the power, and the slavery of sin. Which always brings about death. Okay? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will inherit eternal life. But if we refused to... His, if we refuse his love gift of salvation, we will experience eternal death. And I implore you, it is my responsibility as a believer in Christ Jesus to warn you and to beg you to receive Jesus. Not to receive me, not to give me money or I don't want anything. All I want you to do is surrender to God. Surrender your life, surrender your heart to Jesus Christ, who is your savior. I'm not asking you to surrender to a church. No, surrender to Jesus Christ. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He made you in his image and after his likeness, and he wants you to be with him forever because the earth, the way it is now, is not going to remain forever. He's going to destroy this earth and put the kind of earth that he always wanted from the beginning without sin and it's going to be completely in perfection this world is going to pass away it's going to be burned up with fervent heat it has to be dissolved because sin has destroyed this planet so he has to make a new heaven and a new earth and I want you to be a part of that I want you to be a part of that new Jerusalem that is going to come down from heaven onto the earth where all the believers are going to congregate and be together with Jesus forever. Where there will be no more dying, no more pain, no more sorrow. And he promised he would wipe away all tears from our eyes. No more death. No more growing old. Nothing except bliss except loving each other and loving the lord that's what i want for you second peter chapter 3 verse 9 reads the lord is not slack meaning he's not slow concerning his promise what promise is that the promise of his return to the earth to get his people and to judge the earth so he said prior to him leaving his disciples he was going to return. And he said that throughout his ministry as well. But when he came, he had to die first. Okay. But as he went back, he says, I will return. Okay. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. So we're going to be with him, but he's going to come back to get us. And I want him to come back and get you and get me. But we also first have to surrender to him. So I urge you to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just finishing up this uh, particular verse here it says, 
as some men count slackness, meaning slowness, but but he but is long suffering. I'm gonna start from the beginning. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but his long suffering. What is long suffering? It means to be patient and bearing the offenses of others. It also means slow to anger and slow to punish. To us, Lord, not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has long suffering towards us because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And repentance is a change of one's mind. When you repent, you're changing your mind. You're changing your attitude. You're changing a direction in your life from disobeying God to now obeying and surrendering to the will of God. So that's what it takes in order to be saved. We must repent. Our attitude, our, our lifestyle, everything that we've been doing prior has to be changed. We have to be willing to give all that up for him. And to me, he's worth it because, like I said before, he died for us. He gave up his life for us so we can be with him. Because remember, in the Garden of Eden, when man sinned against God, the relationship, the fellowship that Adam and Eve had with God was broken because of their disobedience. And the only way that it can be restored is that we repent and we surrender our lives back to the Lord and the relationship will be restored automatically through the spirit of God. Our spirit connects with his spirit. And we will be children of the most high God. First Timothy reads chapter two, verses three to, through six. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now you wonder, I've been hearing this word saved. People keep telling me save. I'm going to be saved. What, 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 is, what, what does it mean to be saved? It means to keep safe and sound. To rescue from danger or destruction. Yes, you are in danger. If you're not saved, you're in danger of God's wrath, which will destroy you. Not only your body, but your soul in hell. Remember, the Bible says, fear not that those that could just destroy the body, but after that has no more power. But fear the one that can destroy both soul and body in hell, and that's God. So our life don't just end and we cease to exist once we die here on the earth. No, our soul continues to live on in eternity. But where will your soul live in eternity? Will it be uh, eternal death or eternal life? And the only way to have eternal life in Jesus Christ is to surrender to him. Okay. The rest of that verse reads, and to come unto the knowledge of of the truth. What is truth? Jesus is truth. It says in John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you want to know what the truth is, Jesus Christ is the truth. He is truth. He is life. The rest of that verse reads on, for there is one God and one mediator, meaning one who intervenes between two in order to make or restore peace and friendship. See, that's what we want. We want peace and friendship with God. And it says between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So I'm going to read it over again. <coughs> Excuse me. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. And it goes on to read, who gave himself a ransom, meaning a price, for all to be testified in due time. What was the price? His life. His very life was the price that he paid just to restore our relationship with him. He gave his life. Now I'm going to open up 
this moment in my message to give you an invitation to receive Christ. It's very, very, very simple. There's nothing complicated about it. And this is not about me, but it's about him. None of this stuff, none of, none of these things I've been saying to you is about me. It's not about me. It's about Christ. And it's about what he wants for you. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13 and verse 17 reads that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. This is how simple it is to to surrender to God. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's time for you to surrender to God. He wants to form a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to protect you. And even now, so many believe, uh, unbelievers out there, he is protecting you, whether you realize it or not. He's protecting you because he loves you. And he's giving you time and the opportunity to come back to him because he loves you that much. Some of you out there, he's giving you long life, longevity to give you a, an opportunity to come back to him. <coughs> Excuse me. I beg of you. Please surrender your heart to Jesus Christ because he is the only person that can save you. He's the only person. He loved you so much that he left heaven and became a man and went through the shame, the despising, being beat to a pulp and nailed to a cross just to restore our relationship with him. That's how much he loves us. Please surrender your heart to Jesus Christ while you still have the opportunity. This could be your last opportunity to do so. This could be your last warning. He loves you so much. Don't turn your back on him. Please don't turn your back on him. Thank you for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And please share with others, especially those that are not under the protection of the Most High God. Those that are not safe, please share with them. This could be their last opportunity to hear the gospel. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.